great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, and that is Larry Jennings. If you don't know this, he is a minister with the Fellowship of the Inner Light. He's a good friend, mentor, and teacher, and fellow sojourner with many, many people in this church community as well as the greater community. He's recently so-called retired. That's a, a misnomer, isn't it? <laughs> you know, he's so-called retired from uh, being a, a manager of the Altmeyer Funeral Homes, and he's a funeral director. He's helped many, many of us when we've had friends and relatives passing, and he also helps those who have passed. And he has really been gifted with that and taken that responsibility. And he does it from his heart and from his soul. And it's very healing to all of us that he touches. Larry is happy to be a father. He has children and a bunch of grandchildren and a, a very happy wife. And he lives here in Virginia Beach. And he's going to share some wonderful things today pertaining to Father's Day, some of which he um, inf is information that he got going into the Hall of Records. So let's give him a warm welcome. Well, thank each of you also wonderful welcome and first of all I want to thank and wish all of our fathers here a happy Father's Day I know many of you are here today and also for our home listeners happy Father's Day to you also I thought I'd begin today with a little bit of history of when this holiday had its beginning when Bruce called me several months ago to speak today I immediately responded, yeah, I would really enjoy speaking on Father's Day. And uh, so I started to dig into it and found some interesting history I want to share with you. On July 5th in 1908, a West Virginia church sponsored the first event in honor of Father's Day, a Sunday sermon in honor of 362 men who had died the previous December and an explosion at the Fairmont Coal Company mines. It was a one-time commemoration and not an annual holiday. The next year, a Spokane, Washington woman named Sonora Smart Dodd, one of six children who was raised by her widower, and she tried to establish an official day equivalent to Mother's Day, which was already in effect, for fathers. She once told the Spokane Daily Chronicle, my father was both father and mother to me and my brothers and sisters. Sonora was just 16 when her mother Ellen had died. In 1910, Sonora brought a petition before the Spokane Ministerial Alliance to recognize the courage and devotion of all fathers. She was hoping to celebrate Father's Day on her father's birthday, June 5th. She had gone to local churches, the YMCA, to shopkeepers, to government officials to raise support, and she was successful. Washington State approved celebrating the first statewide Father's Day. The local clergy got involved and really liked this idea but they couldn't pull something together as quickly as a fifth for her father's birthday. So they settled on June 19th, the third Sunday in June, where it's always remained. On the first Father's Day in 1910, churches gave sermons across Spokane, and they were dedicated to fathers, where they gave out red and white roses they were passed out in honor of living and deceased fathers. The mayor of Spokane and governor of Washington issued proclamations, and Sonora found her calling. She spent the next 60 years pushing for, the, for a Father Day to become a national holiday. Her father, William Jackson Smart, 
the original inspiration for Father's Day, was born in Arkansas in 1842. Records show that he enlisted in the Union as a soldier in 1863. That was odd because Arkansas was a Confederate state. But research has shown that William actually served on both sides. Driving a supply wagon for the Confederate troops, William was captured in the Battle of Pea Ridge, a decisive victory for the Union. And he was, became a prisoner. Rather than languish as a prisoner of war camp, he agreed to enlist in the Union Army and drive their supply wagon. He was actually a Reb before he was a Yank. Sonora, his daughter, was a member of both the United Daughters of the Confederacy and the Daughters of the Union. That first Father Day celebration in Spokane might have remained a local tradition if not for her hard work. Following the 1910 Father's Day observance, William Jennings Bryan, one of the most famous politicians of the time, sent Sonora a letter congratulating her, which sparked a rush of national media attention on Sonora and Spokane. She won the support of her congressman. She went to lobby for the creation of this national holiday. And in 1916, President Woodrow Wilson celebrated Father's Day in Spokane, Washington. We don't know if William Jackson Smart was there to shake the president's hand, but that would have been one of his last Father's Day, for William died in 1919, which is the year my father was born. More than a Father's Day booster, Sonora Smart Dodd was an accomplished artist. She was a poet, a children's book author, and I was amazed to find out she was a funeral home director. And she was a founding member of just about every civics organization in Spokane, but she never let go of her determination to give fathers like hers the recognition she thought they deserved. It wasn't until 1972, six years after Sonora's death at the age of 96, that President Richard Nixon finally signed a congressional resolution declaring the third Sunday in June to be Father's Day. Her dad, no doubt, would have been very proud. This day brings back so many memories. As a father of three daughters and a grandchildren, I have 16 of them now, it's hard to believe. I can't help but reflect on what fatherhood means to me. I was fortunate to have a wonderful father, and he instilled in me and my three brothers a great love of nature, having grown up in the Adirondacks of New York. I have great memories of swimming in these beautiful lakes, of fishing and hunting together. I also can remember fondly picking blackberries with my grandmother and making sure to make lots of noise so the black bears knew we had joined them. They also liked them. He also taught us the importance of family. Our family remains very close today, and we each share a heritage that we are all proud of. I have learned over the years that family means so much more than just blood relatives. My family has tree has grown to include you here at the fellowship as my family, and so many more. I first became a father in 1976 when my first daughter, Melissa, was born. Six days later, I turned 21 years old. I certainly was not ready for fatherhood. Looking back, I too was just a child, still learning about my life, still learning about myself, I graduated from mortuary school when Melissa was three years old, and then Jamie was born at that time, right when I graduated. Ashley came into our lives three years later, after I had fully involved myself in my career in funeral service. How time flies. 
I witnessed my grandson Gabriel graduate from Kempsville High School yesterday. And it will still be another year before Nolan starts kindergarten. Something magical happened in those moments when my children were born. I experienced for the first time in my life true unconditional love as I have never felt before. My daughters completed me and I feel their love and joy each and every day. And I often think of them during our services here when we read our giving statement. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. As parents, fathers, or mothers, we give so much, but we receive and return is beyond all of our expectations. Knowing this love and joy is a true gift from our Creator. I can remember the first time I visited the Hall of Records and watched myself as a soul, leaving my mother, father, God at the moment of my creation. During this moment, I know that God experienced the same unconditional love for me as I did when my children were born. Each of us have been born into the light, and as I watched my spark of light leaving my mother, father, God, I was shown myself dividing into the masculine and the feminine. In this lifetime, I have chosen the masculine, but in others, I have experienced the feminine, because we are one. That moment has opened a portal of understanding of myself as a parent and an understanding of myself as a child of God. You know, when I was preparing to do this talk, I sat quietly, and I listened to the voice within. And I was told to meditate and visit the Hall of Records. And I want to share with you that experience. In this hall have been placed in a book a permanent record of your soul's journey, of mine, of yours. We each have a book there. It is here that we can visit and learn from our experiences, both present and past. I listened to that quiet voice within, and I began to meditate. I began in the, my meadow using Paul Solomon's seven terrace meditation that we share each Sunday before service. And thank you, Sarah, for that today. It was beautiful. I traveled through the meadows, and I traveled through the terraces, and when I reached my temple, and I remind you, my temple may look different than yours. It's all perception when we arrive, what we see. But when I arrived my temple, I opened the heavy wooden door and entered. I turned to the left and followed a hallway to the keeper of the records, and he greeted me with a smile. He led me into a corridor with shelves of books as far as I could see. He crouched down and reached for my book and placed it in front of me. The book floated in the air and the pages turned and then stopped. I saw before me on the page, not a past life this time, but rather the face of the master, Jesus Christ. He was smiling at me, and he looked back at me. When I, when I picture his face, if you look over to the side, you'll see a drawing that Nanette Chris did of the Christ, of what came to her. Looked very similar to that. Absolutely beautiful. And then he spoke to me, and he said, I want to give you a gift this Father's Day. The pages of the book stirred again, and there was a little bit of wind that came up. And as the pages turned and turned, they suddenly stopped. 
And he said, remember this life that had previously been shown to you. And I again saw the small child that I have spoken about here in church in the past. What I was seeing and experiencing was a small girl about five years old. She's dirty. She's wearing clothing, not much more than rags. And it was during the 1600s. I've talked to her before, so I'll just very quickly tell you her story. I met her the first time I had ever visited my book. And what struck me the most was how I could feel what she was feeling, which was total despair, total sadness, and I could feel she was all alone. I could feel her pain and see the abuse that she had been through. As I again experienced this moment, now with the Christ, he told me to know unconditional love. Your soul needed to experience a life without love. Then he showed her death to me again. I watched and experienced with her as she died in a pathway outside of the village she lived in, collapsing in the snow unloved and uncared for, and no one to remember her or to grieve for her on that earth plane. He then showed me that Mother Earth came to her in the moment and surrounded her with the animals of the forest, warming her body, and in her last breath, she felt love as she crossed over. I had seen this page of my book before, and I've told the full story in a previous talk, and that is where this story ended for me. As the thought went through my mind that that was the end of the story, Christ read my thoughts and smiled. He told me there was more and told me to remember from the Bible what was written. O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are the work of your hands. From Isaiah 64, 8. As I stood in the hall of records, I can still feel it, but I can remember I cried openly in the presence of the Christ, and he continued to speak. The child was the work of my hands, and you are that child. Your soul needed this moment of emptiness so you could become the father to your children, full of compassion and unconditional love. He then said to me, I have also experienced this emptiness and despair. It is because of this I felt your soul needed to have this experience so in later lives you would have this memory imprinted in your soul. This would enable you to love others unconditionally as your father and I have done before. What a great message. He then smiled and disappeared. I was still in the hall of records and hadn't noticed that the bookkeeper had returned. He closed my book and placed it back on the shelf and walked away. I walked the hallway to the center of the temple and entered the healing room where I was surrounded with healing energy and understanding of what had just happened. I then left the temple and returned to my body and I immediately wrote this experience down, word for word, so these details would not fade away. This took place two Sundays ago as I was preparing to speak this for today. This experience will be treasured and has answered so many questions for me. It has given me a greater understanding of myself and what my heart has always known. Love is the essence of our existence. If we would simply accept this, our world would become a place where conflicts would not exist. Everyone would respect each other. 
We would listen to each other and accept our differences with unconditional love. No one would feel unloved. It sounds so simple, but reality faces each of us. As we strive for our truth, remember we are attending a school of life. Each learning, experience, and experiencing what we need. Our pathways are different, and we each have so much to learn. The Hall of Records, as I like to call it, is accessible to all of us. I use meditation to arrive there, and I've been allowed to visit just a few times. For each of us, when it is our time to cross over, we'll be able to visit this place at will. In this lifetime, my guides have allowed me the opportunity to further understand my soul's journey through these visits. This Father's Day, I ask you to remember that you also have come from that spark of light from our source. You have led many lives, both as father, as mother, and each of these lives have given you lessons for you to learn. Embrace them, for they bring each of us closer to our own truth. Today, I give thanks to Sonora, who wanted to thank her father for all her loving so many years ago. That love created this day for all of us. For Father William must have been an amazing father, bringing his family, both his masculine side and his feminine side, as they came together to love those children unconditionally in the role of mother and father. I can only hope that my love can match that of Sonora's love for her father. I wish all of you a wonderful day. Celebrate yourselves, whether you are a father, a mother, a grandparent. Remember, you have been all of these in your soul's journey in many lifetimes. You are that spark of light, and our Father, Mother God loves you unconditionally. The Dalai Lama said, when you talk, you're only repeating what you know. When you listen, you will learn something new. Listening allowed me to have this experience. My hope is that you have learned something new of yourself today by listening to me in our oneness. My experience is yours. We are family. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. Go within and discover something new about yourself. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you.